Hello there, and welcome to episode three of What Did I Miss? Today, we are having our first official guest. Um, it was always going to be Paul Pierce. Uh, Paul Pierce was like a, a brother that I might have had, but I have a brother, but he was, and he was probably one of my favorite people I've ever worked with um, because he's ridiculous and goofy and fun and we were the same. So he is our first official guest. Now I will say this, we, uh, we taped this. Um, he was in a hookah bar. It was in the morning in the San Fernando Valley. So you will see some of that. Um, his computer also died towards the end. So I'm sure the editors will have a field day trying to figure out how to salvage the end. And it was good. So I hope they do. And we touched on basically anything you would possibly want to ask Paul Pierce about. Poopy pants, LeBron, strippers, uh, the whatnot. It's all there. So please enjoy. Okay. <laughs> Officially, welcome to the third episode. The third episode of What Did I Miss Today? Our first, you're our first official guest, by the way. So I mean, no big deal. Might be our last. Well, Paul Pierce joins wait us a minute. today. You, I thought this was the first <laughs> episode. You told me I was gonna be on the first well, episode. No, you're our first guest, but we oh, did two okay. episodes without guests because oh, okay. I'm a narcissist and thought that would be best. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, our first guest has to be like someone good. And then I thought, who is my <laughs> favorite person that I worked with last? Paul Pierce. Your boy. Well, it was Chauncey, but he wouldn't do it. So <laughs> here we go. Okay. He this is going to be fun. First of all, thanks for doing this because it's oh, kind of crazy. Um, I just, this is like, what? This is our first time getting to like talk without having uh, a lot of rules that right, we normally right. would have had. Because you and I both left ESPN. Like I left quietly. No, you decided yeah. to leave with a retirement video with strippers. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of went out with a bang. <laughs> like, was that your plan when you did that? Honestly? Did you like that go, um, this is it. I'm quitting and this is how I'm going to do it. That wasn't really my plan, but I wasn't like, I wasn't tripping. I mean, I was just like, no. You know what? At the end of the day, look, Beetle, I'm retired. I was tired. I was tired of him anyway. Truthfully, you know, I don't got nothing against him, but I was getting bored there. You know, stuff was changing all the time, and it just wasn't the same feel like it was when we was doing it. You know, it was just it was too much changes, and I got to the point where I was just like, this is my last year anyway, and. uh you know, I'm just having fun. I'm retired. I'm allowed to have fun. No, I, I thought as soon as that video was on the internet and I watched it, I was like, that was perfectly Paul. That was the most on-brand thing I've ever seen you do. <laughs> no, and I no, appreciated but look, it. So the next For morning, <laughs> no, look, so the, I'm not realizing when I, I did it, you know, I'm having fun, have some drinks, whatever. And so I wake up to the next morning, my phone got about like 200 messages. My Twitter is going off. Look, my Twitter go. I'm like, what happened? I'm like, because I pass out on the couch. And I just wake up to all kind of people oh, trying to reach me. And I'm like, damn, what happened? Is somebody died? I mean, why are all these people? And I looked up died. at the video. Yes. The video. You know, when you get a lot of calls, it's like, man, this is an emergency. Some people yes. trying to reach me. And I look like, oh, wow. And? Okay. This video is uh, kind of viral right now. And I was like, oh. Kind of. Wait, why would you not know that that was going to happen? Because. Did you look, think we were concentrating on the cards? <laughs> look, when I was doing it, I didn't understand how Instagram Live worked. I didn't know. I thought, okay, if it's live, I can send it or I can delete it. You know, what's live is live and what's ah. is over. I didn't know other people could record your Instagram. <laughs> So I just thought once the video, you know, it was late at night, you know, only a few people were going to see it. Whatever. I didn't know you could record it and send it out. That's awesome. You know, and do all that stuff. I love that you're a hookah bar right now. And it's like, <laughs> what, what morning is this? It's morning somewhere oh, yeah. in LA. I love <laughs> yeah. it so much. Um, yeah. By the way, that's the number one thing that people, I think, didn't understand when Snapchat first came out. They were like sending body part pictures to people and they were like, oh, it'll be gone in 24 hours. And I'm like, you do know that there's a screen grab. Right. Like I could screen grab and video anything I could see on the Internet, see, which always I mean, cracks me up. So I'm like, it's forever, man. I loved it. I loved it so much. The, the first I heard, you know, who told me about it was Chauncey because I got a text from him. and He's like, do you see what your boy did? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I went and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> the 
this oh is my the best God. thing. <laughs> Because Chauncey's no always like the serious big brother. No, you well, have no look, idea. I had no clue it was gonna turn into this, but you know, it worked out for the everything worked out for the best. I'm 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 happy. I'm happy to ever been. I don't have to come on the show and wear a coat and tie, and you know, I'm I had to do that too much. I'm done with that. What was like the first thing you started to want to do when you knew you were, you were done? Like you didn't have to go in every day. You didn't have to do TV. You didn't have to do meetings. Like what? How did you enjoy that first day of no, freedom? I just, as I like to call it. Man, I was just. It was like a breath of fresh air, knowing I didn't have to get, yeah, knowing I had to do all that stuff. You know, I'm sitting in the backyard, drinking my wine, hitting my hookah, and I'm just thinking about my next moves. You know, you know, I always got stuff in the works. And so, you know, I was planning on leaving it. I said, all right, I'm going to take the rest of the year off because this happened like early, like January, I believe, February around there. So I'm going to take the rest yeah. of the season off, summer, relax, enjoy family, friends, travel a little bit. Then I'm getting back to work. You know, now I'm doing some stuff with Showtime. I did a deal with DraftKings. Of course, I still got my my, my marijuana brand that's that's that I'm launching next week. I mean, next month in Boston. Um, oh man! And so I got a lot of things on my plate. So um, they were like, "What are some stories that you guys have never like?" So so much stuff that we did at our old job was like. It was off camera for me anyways. That was the fun part. It was stuff that no one would ever see. And that's sort of how it works. But do you remember like you and I were on the internet and we were trying to figure out like some stupid dating app. It might've been Bumble. Boy, and yeah, we were like, Bumble. Let's, what was it? <laughs> and we we're like, let's join it together to see like how it worked. And it was, I think I like lost interest. I went back on it eventually, but it was just the funniest thing to see. Cause we were trying to set up our bios. Yeah. Like what pictures do we use? And I'm like, what are we doing? Like, that's what we did during commercial. I wonder if people think like it's serious during commercial breaks. <laughs> Look, so I set up like, the bubble nope. and I put a picture, a couple pictures of me on there. I was letting people know I had kids. And so the very next day, my ex-wife calls me. He's like, I hear you're on some dating site. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, can you take the pictures of the kids down? I said, listen, if I'm going to be back on the scene, I, I'm letting people know this is my situation. I got a, you know, family, but I'm divorced and uh, this is what it is. Don't, don't try to act all jealous now. I'm back on the scene. <laughs> on the scene. Did it work? Did Bumble, because Bumble's the good one because the girl, the woman has to reach out first, which for me, I hated, obviously, but for you, I feel like that's the perfect scenario. It was cool. Right? I never, I never had nothing come of it. I didn't have a date or nothing. I kind of, I think I got off, off of it after two days. Remember, I think I told you, I was like, this is too much. Yeah. It was too much. I think both of us were like, this is weird. Plus you always, yeah. you and Chauncey always gave me like dating advice. Like if I like someone, I was supposed to just send them the eyes emoji. And oh, like yeah, that, that was, that was my, uh, <laughs> that was me getting into the dating scene. I was like, let me send the eyes emoji. Let them know I'm watching you. <laughs> I mean, I laugh so hard because as a normal person, like if somebody sends me eyes, I'm like, what's this weirdo doing? But then I would watch you and I'm like, how is this working? And then it was I realized working, wasn't oh, wasn't you're it? stupid. I was getting like, responses yeah, oh, back. It was like, hey. All the time. That's the one. You got to yeah, send I, the eye. It's something different now. I think a lot of them are sending like, you know, a lot of them are sending like highs and the kiss emoji with the heart. <laughs> I, I get a lot of those. I get a lot of the uh, the fire, the fire. Oh, that's you a know. good one. That's a good one. And so, like, do people actually say words or just pictures? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, let me get a lemon mint hookah. Uh, okay. Yeah, hook me up. Oh, a lemon yeah. mint hookah? Yeah, why? That sounds like a drink. Yeah. <laughs> why do you like hookah? What does it do for you? Is it it, it does nothing. It does absolutely nothing, I'm telling you. I think uh, it's a flavor. It's flavor. You know, some I used to smoke cigars. And so this is like flavor. I know it's totally bad for you, but uh, <laughs> I don't know why I do a lot of things I do, Beetle. <laughs> well, there, there's a book in there somewhere. There's no um, okay. this madness. Like I want to talk about, let's talk about some basketball stuff because the, the top 75 list came out. Um, and of course your, your tweet was like, on it. eat that haters or whatever. <laughs> I made it. So that's the thing. Like, do you really think you had a lot of haters that like, it's one thing to hate Paul Pierce, but I don't think anybody thinks you're not good at basketball. Right. Uh, well, this new generation is pretty dumb. You know, they, they don't, they don't do their research. 
they listen to some of the stuff I said on ESPN about LeBron and Dwayne Wade and all that. And, you know, that they don't understand that's just TV. You know, and I got a lot right. of hate off of that. And so if they really did their research, they would know. So, you know, but it's just this new generation get caught into, you know, hot topics and internet and TV talk and all that stuff. And they hate you. But whatever, you know, I, I'm, I'm always been the villain. And so I can live with that. I know. I was going to say, do you even, could you picture yourself not being the villain? I can't picture you not being a villain. <laughs> I mean, listen, being a, no one likes the Boston Celtics anyway. And I've been the face of the Boston Celtics all these years. One of the most hated franchise, but most respected, you know, America. Oh, team, settle down. Yeah. Settle down. Come on. I mean, America's team Maybe has one always up. been like Lakers or. San Antonio and, and Bulls, oh, but nobody ever. When in the world were the Spurs ever respected by anyone? Ever? I mean, they got mad respect. I mean, they were like a robot. Everybody like they went along. They didn't. They didn't have nobody that was unlikable. You know what I'm saying? Like my yeah, son. they tried that Dennis Rodman. You know, like it's people fair. didn't like me. People didn't like KG, and you know Ray was pretty likable. People didn't like Rondo. You know, so. We weren't, we weren't that, and we didn't try to be that, and that's okay. You imp- that's so somebody got to have somebody got to be the villain if you're gonna have all these superheroes. Uh, okay, yeah, I just I don't want to even talk about that right now. The LeBron thing cracks me up because I do know that people think you hate LeBron. I I've been very open about like I know LeBron doesn't like me, and I don't care for him, and that's fine. It is what it <laughs> is. But when people say that you hate LeBron or don't like him and they try to pretend what that they think you're jealous or like, what is the angle of that? Of my dog's barking. Just you know, people that. just hear some of the negative things I've said about LeBron, but they don't hear the positive things I say about LeBron. So, you know, negativity. Sticks. No, I never heard it. You know, neg- <laughs> <Yeah>. I, I, <laughs> negativity always going to stick. I mean, he's already said he was second behind Jordan, uh, but people don't hear that. And, when he went to the Lakers with Anthony Davis, which I said years ago when they were when they lost game one to Portland, I said, well, if the Lakers don't win uh, uh, this year or if they lose first round with this squad, there's no way I can put them in my top five. So people hung on to that. And just, you know, but that just is what it is. And they look at the battles we had. So what? Am I supposed to like a guy? No, I didn't like nobody on the court. But do I respect him? Of course I respect <laughs> what he's done for the game uh, and, and the longevity that he's been able to provide and, and, you know, the shows he's been able to give us, the spectacular athleticism over the years. Of course I respect that and I honor that. Now, you on the other hand, you know, there was a rumor that he got you fired from ESPN. So I can understand he tried. why you, you don't like him. So He oh, did try, yep. Pretty- <laughs> he did try to do that. I was like, "Wow, I'm honored that I'm even on your mind. Thank you very much, sir. That's that's a weird See, that's more place personal, for me to be." <laughs> but I don't have no personal. Oh yeah, no. With him. So my stuff with him started out not personal. I, like I I made fun of the decision, like four hundred thousand other talking heads did at the time, and I think for some reason that was it. So it wasn't personal to begin with. It's obviously yeah. now it will always be personal, but. And it is what it is. I, but I also, I'm very comfortable with not liking people. Like, I think that's what makes us all healthy. It's the people that pretend they like everyone. Right. You can't trust them. Right. You can't trust them. You don't know about what, what makes KG. No, no, like, that's I, like, I don't like the fake stuff. It me makes neither. me uncomfortable. Um, was there ever a player that you played against that you actually thought you hated, but in the end you turned out like, no, I actually like you. And maybe we could be friends. Yes. Metal world peace. <laughs> No, seriously, we had some crazy battles. He didn't pull my pants down in the middle of the game. We didn't tussle. We didn't wrestle to the ground. And then it's just like, man, we would see each other in the summer and play pickup game. Next thing we on the uh, next thing I know, we on the sideline talking. You know, he introduced me to his kids, and it was just like, damn, man, we we damn near about to come to blows every time we play each other. But then we see some, see each other off the court in a pickup setting, but where we're on the sideline kind of chilling. And I'm thinking like, all right, you know, when I first see it, it can go down, you know, we might have to throw some blows, but then we end up talking <laughs> and, and being cool ever since, man, it's crazy. But you would never thought that the way uh, we would uh, go at it and, and, and just battle all the time on the court and talk about each other and just, 
push and fight and throw each other to the ground. And but even to this day, you know, I talked to him not long ago. We 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 real cool. I feel like those are two really uh, strong personalities yeah, going at it. Yeah. By the way, speaking of that, reminded me of this reminds me of the Scotty Pippen thing that's going on right now. Like I know he's. I'm going to preface it with I know he's trying to sell a book, and and I get all that. But he's been saying some kind of reckless stuff about how he's just as good as Michael Jordan. Um, you obviously know more about basketball than I do. Is that true? Did I miss that part? Is he as good as Michael Jordan? I mean, you know what? He has a right to say or believe what he want to believe. Uh, <clears throat> Pippen is one of the greatest. But, I mean, you know, he, we all know that he's not better than Michael <laughs> Jordan. I mean, <laughs> you know, and but Pippen in his own right, you know, Jordan wouldn't be able to do what he did without Pippen. As all great athletes. You don't do, think so? No, but listen, all great, what people don't understand is all great players need another great player to be who they are. You know what I'm saying? Kobe had Shaq, Shaq had Kobe. You know, and Magic had Kareem, Kareem, you know, had Magic, you know, and vice versa. So, you know, they go hand in hand with one another because, you know, the only one who did something pretty much by themselves was Dirk and the Whiskey. I mean, he had great players, but they was past their prime. It's like, you know, every Wow. Are you talking about Jason Kidd? Or are you just flat out yeah, shading Jason, Jason Kidd, Kidd right was now? well past his prime. You know, Sean Marion well past his prime. You know, you had Jason Terry, he's not a Hall of Famer. You know, so That's fair. All greatness need other great players to be great. And we seeing that with LeBron. LeBron had way Bosch, two Hall of Famers. Uh eventually you probably gonna see yeah. Kyrie and Kevin Love Hall of Famers that he won. Anthony Davis is Kevin Love and Hall. Kyrie? No. Yeah, I think they both will be Hall of Famers. Like... Okay, so let me – that's the Hall of Fame thing. Are we just giving Hall of Fame recognition too easily these days? Does it feel like yeah. almost everyone now is – we're talking about it? Like, why are we doing this? I think, I think uh, we are giving – but I, I, this is the thing. It depends on what ballot you make. You know, some people be on the first, okay. second, third, fourth ballot, you know, and then eventually you get guys recognized later down the line which is okay. But I think we do give it out too loosely, to be all honest. I, I'm not going to really say no names that, you know, some made it, but I think, I don't know. KG said it's watered down. And he and we he spoke some yeah. names, but I ain't going to say no names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did just say some stuff, didn't he? He did oh, just say did. some stuff. I did just read that. Like you two are, what is it like? I don't want, I don't want like the X rated version, but well, I do, but obviously they're not going to air that. Um, like when you two just hang out, like, what is it like? Is there something that you guys do or talk about that would surprise us? I don't think anything we do will surprise you. You know, most of the time I'm going to go to his house, you know, watch a game, you know, I'm going to bring my little, I'm going to bring my little joint, chill out, sit in the backyard, chop it up with him. We're going to sip on some wine and we're going to talk hoops. We're going to talk life. In a lot of ways, our, our, our life is parallel. And so, you know, the one thing is we both knew each other in high school. We both have kids the same mm-hmm. age. We live around the corner from each other. Uh, we, we divorced around the same time. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we got a lot in common. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> Y'all need a reality show, like a like a. You live in a house yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know where that's airing. Wait, what's the thing with Showtime? What are you doing with Showtime? And so I'm gonna be covering some can show you say? basketball. I'm gonna be doing some things. KG is launching his show, uh, uh, certified in the next couple months podcast, nice. and I'm gonna be working with him on that. Be working with uh, Stack and Matt on their show, as well as doing some behind the scenes stuff for Show Boxing. And everybody knows I've been passionate about the boxing, so I'm gonna be, you know, doing a lot of different things for them. Okay, the boxing thing, I yeah, you're always there. You're always on the Instagram live. This whole Jake and Logan Paul thing. First of all, I saw you post a picture with them. <laughs> I'm not gonna forgive you for that. But uh, so, what do you think about this? Because that is sort of like that is the boxing that we watch now. That's what's happening in the world. Like, how do you feel about what it is? You know what? I can't be mad at somebody. Everything is a spectacle now. You know, everything, we live on the internet. We're trying to garnish views. We, we try to give fans interest 
And so if you got a YouTuber who's garnishing 21 million views and that people are going to watch it, you're going to put them on pay-per-view and it's going to make money. That's the world that we're in. And and, and like we say, everything that you see on the internet is not real, right? And so we now we have not real boxing. But if you got people that's going to tune in, pay for it, and the fighters are going to get eight-figure salaries, then that's the world we live in. And so how can you be mad at that? So if somebody come to me like, hey, Paul, we'll give you $10 million. We want you to get in the ring with Meta World Peace. I might think about it, too. I mean... Wait, would you do it for Ted? Is that the price? Ten million is the price for me for that. Hmm. Tax free, or do we need to up that so the taxes get taken care of? Well, all right, fifteen it's got to million. Tax free. Fifteen million, and they can tax. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, honestly, I, I go into the ring well, one night. For all these I had to play a whole season to make fifteen mil, and they telling me I can go into the ring for one night and make that. All right. <laughs> How do you think your odds would be against him? Do you think you could actually win it also physically? Yeah, of course. I have now a I want this to happen, obviously. Yeah, of course I have a shot. Hmm. Of course. All right. This is something that um, somebody is going to make this happen now, and I am, I'm here for it. Where's right, your hookah? Right, she, I haven't even seen you do any of the hookah. She's trying to pause me. Give me one second. Pause you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Stand by. Actually, you know what? Actually, this is a perfect time. We'll take a quick break. Do what you got to do. It's fall, which means football season is in full swing. And for many of us, there's no better way to enjoy the games than by having some skin in the game, which is why BetMGM remains the exclusive betting partner of The Athletic. And as a fan of The Athletic, you can bet $10 to win $150 plus a free three-month subscription or extension to your subscription with The Athletic when you bet with BetMGM using our promo code. Just sign up at betmgm.com and use the promo code THEATHLETICPOD at checkout to take advantage of this special offer from the king of sportsbooks. That's bet 10 bucks to win 150 plus three months free from The Athletic at betmgm.com and using the promo code THEATHLETICPOD at checkout. New customer offer. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. 21 years of age or older to wager. Arizona, Colorado, Washington, D.C., Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia only. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP in Arizona, 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, Washington, D.C., Nevada, Wyoming, and Virginia, 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan, 1-800-GAMBLER in Maryland, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. Call or text the Tennessee red line 800-889-9789 in Tennessee or call 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. The best part? There's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Okay, that's actually, you know what? That was perfect timing. That was kind of weird. She actually knew what she was doing. Because now, now we're back with part B. We're trying to think of a game to play with you. Um, we're right. like coming up with names. Like, okay, I, I, we have to get this out of the way right now because it, one of the hardest times I ever laughed on the ESPN show was the night we talked about the wheelchair and the pooping of the pants and the yada, yada, yada. Like there are people... I mean, now it's like it's on the web. It's a conspiracy theory. But the whole pooping of the pants thing, people thought that you were being serious <laughs> about the pooping of the pants, which I want you to be serious because pooping one's pants is – by the way, I just want to say this a thousand times. How many times do you hear that from haters and fans alike? Something about that. <laughs> Every day on my internet, on my, on, my, on my Twitter. That's it's the thing. I can't believe people really believe – so listen to this. <laughs> And I want fans to hear this. Now, if you poop your pants, yeah. does it make sense to sit down and mush it in a wheelchair? No. I would walk back there and go straight to the bathroom. Why would I need a wheelchair if I poop my pants? 
Like you don't sit down on your poop. Wait, right? Can I play? Can I play devil's Doesn't advocate? Make sense. Well, I'm going to play devil's Come advocate on. because you knew if this, in fact, was if you had pooped. Okay, your pants, okay. You knew that by sitting in the wheelchair, you had protection from that moment till they got you out of sight. And so whatever was in that chair after that, well, we'll never know about because it's in the back. So maybe you were smart enough to figure out, like, I'm going to do this. Because you're, what you're saying makes sense, but it's not, you know, it's not like you just got right back up. You disappeared and came back. I want it to be that you pooped your pants. I wouldn't be ashamed. We've all pooped our pants, period. No, I, I, I never pooped my pants after three years old. Wait, say that again? No shot. Okay, I've fine. I never pooped my pants after three years old. Oh, you're so mature. Okay, well, that's fine. Fine, then we're going to play now, a game maybe called... on the side of the road, but not my pants. Okay, I'll give you that. You're more civilized than most. You, you know what to do. The game is called The Truth or The False. <laughs> Brilliant. I know. Uh, okay. So it's just, there's a, just a few of these because, right. you know, we only have so much time. Um, first up, LeBron James and his old Lakers team will win a championship. Is that the truth or the false? That's the false. They look bad right now. And I don't know if they can stay healthy. That's the false. You have any doubt in your mind that there's a chance they come out of this and figure it out? I don't think they have a chance. I mean, you don't just – the way they playing without LeBron at his age, LeBron can't play 40 minutes like he can to get him through the regular right. season. I mean, if you're asking him to continue to do that and then get him in a regular – and get to the playoffs and carry him, I don't know if that's possible all the way through, but this team as constructed cannot win all a right, championship. All right, fair enough. I, uh, that was correct. That was the right answer. Thank you for that. Uh, next up. <laughs> this Ben Simmons situation will end with him playing for the Sixers again. The truth or the false? That's the false. This relationship is all but over. It's almost like if you walked in, like if if I walked in on, on my wife and with another guy in, in bed, <laughs> it's over. It's completely over. There's okay, no okay, but how do you fix? So this. how do you fix it? Like, <laughs> where does out. he go? So you're on a team somewhere else. Ben Simmons. They say, hey, guess what? We just got Ben Simmons. He'll be here tomorrow. Boom, boom, boom. You're a player on that team. What is your reaction to him coming there? Are you excited? It depends on what team I'm on. But if I'm like the Sacramento Kings or the Detroit Pistons, I mean, I'm excited. Any kind of help, they they all them teams need help. You know, you got an all-star level player, of course, but uh, I'm, I'm all right. excited. All right. This one on I like team. because you're like the old school generation. The new officiating rules this year have made a lot of the superstars very angry, and there's been a lot of whining and complaining because, you know, they, they don't get away with much of the flopping like they used to. So do you find – or let me, I have to do it true or false. You think superstars today have a good point about the new officiating, the truth or the false? What do you mean a good point? You do, I right? I like the way it's being ref. I'm tired of seeing 100 free throws. Yeah, I do. Like all the flopping and failing and all of that, I hate that. You know, and it's and it's exposing some guys. We're not seeing James Harden put up the same numbers. You know, even it's, it's even affecting guys like Trey Young, who got to the line a lot. And so now I like that, that you got to earn it, which means it's even going to get better in the playoffs. You got to earn Does everything. it make the old guys, the old that. generation, you guys, you, when you're talking to each other about sort of the new league and the way kids are today and how they look at things, like, do you guys sort of roll your eyes? And I only ask that because I've been doing stuff with Sean Elliott here, and he's definitely the old get off my yard guy, and he loves it. So are you guys the same way? Like, you think maybe there's a bit of softness that needs to go away from this this generation? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. You see these guys put up astronomical numbers. I mean, I mean that has a lot to do with the referee and the free flow of offense. And, man, I feel like my air in the air before, you had to earn a lot of what you got. You know, I think let them play. Let the players, the skills def define who they are. You know, the game is – this is a sport. There's physicality to every sport. 
And so allow that, you know, I mean, but we baby these guys from AU all the way up, low management, you can't touch them, it's a business, free flow. No, forget that, man. Let's play because the real is right. always going to show. And But the way they're fishing, I, lo- I love that. Is there a player in the league earned. today that could have made it in your era that would have fit in? Yeah. yeah, a lot of them. I mean, you know, LeBron, of course, he can play in any era. A lot of the superstars today can play in any era, although maybe, you know, James Harden, it would have been tough for him to get 35 a night like he did because he was shooting 18, 20 free throws, you know. And I think a lot of rule changes had right. to come because of, of him. And so he would have he would have been affected the this most. This is my final question. It's a tough one, okay? The truth or the false? Chauncey Billups will still be a Portland head coach by the end of the season. <laughs> that's the truth that's the truth i feel like you and i left the work and then we just became like carefree and now he's working really really hard we did we just lose paul that's hilarious if we did and we did we lost paul just like that he's gone i'm thinking the hookah bar said enough but anyways it was super fun to see my old friend chauncey We love you. We know you are working super, super hard. I hope you guys had fun today. So listen, rate, review, tweet, all the good things that come with this whole podcasting situation. I will one day learn the terminology right before my last episode. (laughs) Hope you guys had fun. See you next week.